we are all welcome to today's um our program third week. So we are welcome. I'd like to call uh, our resource person for today, Mr. Matthew Ekum. Over to you, sir. Good evening, everyone. This is the third week. We want to look at data analysis. But before we go to data analysis, we would like to see how we can import files from CSV. From um, CSV, when the data is saved as a CSV file, how we can import it directly to our. At this point, we don't need any package to be installed. So I would just advise, you don't want to install any package, just save your data as a CSV file. And once you do that, you can easily take it to our room without using any package. So how to import this data from your comma separated values to R? The first step is click the file from the menu bar. The first step is how do we save? It? Because in most cases, our data are always in Excel format. That is, if it's not on the database, for many institutions that don't have their data on the database, they have it on Excel format, or for most researchers, they have their data in Excel format. Either the one they downloaded from Google Form, or second data, or the ones they have um, directly. So how do we now save data that is in Excel format to CSV formats? The first step is click on the file from the menu bar, then click on save from the drop down menu. Save us from the drop down menu. That is, if you are saving, um, are, since it is already saved, you want to save it uh, with a different file name or with the same file name but with different extension. You click on save as, then choose the location where you want to save it, then name the file. In the file name, naming the file, you can use the same name, the, the same name with the exact file or have a different name for it. Then click the save as type. Under the save as type, the save as type is a drop down. So a drop down menu will show up. Then you carefully go through it and select CSV, command delimited. Once you select CSV, command delimited, then you click on save button to save. Once you can achieve this, then you have successfully saved your file as CSV. When you open it, you can actually open it, view it from Excel in form of table. And that is uh, one of the best way to view your CSV file. Then the next slide. Next slide, please. Dr. Gunsa, uh -huh. using read.csv. So the read.csv method is used to import a CSV file. So what is the syntax? The syntax is just exactly what I gave you the last time, read.csv. Then the parts. The part, like in this case, since our data is in the same folder with the code, with the uh, arrow script, just put the name of the file there. If it is market, you can say market.csv, put it in quote, then the header, header is true, then set the data as separated by commas. That's why we call it comma separated values. Then what the arguments, then anytime you see a syntax in R, you always have the argument. So once you see the syntax, then the arguments are those uh, things inside the bracket, like the part, that is the CSV part that needs to be imported. Then we have the header, which indicates whether to import the headers and the CSV. 
because the first rows are always the headers. So we can import the headers as well. It's just instructing the machine that the first row contains the header. Then the set is the fee separator character that separates a value from another value. So as I said before, read dot table, we do exact same thing with read dot CSV. Only that read dot table, we use tab to separate the values. While in read dot CSV, it is command that is used to separate the values. So let's go to the next slide. That is the The next slide, please. The next slide. Mr. Wissar, the next slide, please. Can you proceed from your side, please? Okay, so the bar chart, the bar chart, I'll just use the bar chart as an example for what we want to do. I'll just use the bar chart as an example. Since we have, since we have other charts that we are looking at. So in our, most of our plots, just know the keyword, like for bar chart, it is bar plots. Once you have the keyword for the bar plots, Whatever you have inside the brackets are the argument. See, syntax is just simply bar plots. Then you put in bracket the argument. The arguments we have for the bar plots, the first one is X. It's a vector or a matrix containing numerical values used in bar charts. So that is the X. So X could be a vector and could be a matrix. It becomes a matrix when you have more than one variable, meaning that you want to have something like component bar chart or multiple bar chart. But if it is a vector, it means that you just have um, a single variable. When you have a single variable, you can use one color for the bars. But if you have a matrix, meaning that you have more than one um, columns or you have more than one variable, you use multiple colors. So the number of um, variables you have will determine the number of colors that you use to separate a variable from another one. Then the S label is general for all plots. S lab means X label. The label for the X as is. Y lab means the label for the Y as is. Y lab means the label for the Y as is. Y main is the title of the bar chart or of any chart you have. So we look at regression, we also look at the regression um, analysis or the regression, linear regression model. Because when we get to the code, we will not see all this again. But I just have to explain this. So when we start running the code, you understand exactly what you are doing. If we have a linear, a simple linear regression model, if we have a simple linear regression model, we have, for instance, y, which is equation one, equals to beta naught plus beta one x i plus e i. Yeah, the y is the dependent variable, Why the x is the independent variable. Beta naught and beta one here are the parameters we estimate. So by the time we get to the code, what we actually want to estimate is beta naught and beta one. They are unknown. So that's why I want to estimate them from this, um, from this equation one. The error term there, Normal is normally distributed. 
it is assumed to have the same distribution with y. The dependent variable and the error term always have the same distribution, meaning that if y is normally distributed, then the error term too should also be normally distributed. So what do we do with the error term? The error term is the reason why our plot is not a straight line plot exactly. That's why we have the scatter plots. So we have to isolate, we have to minimize the error term or eliminate it so that we can have an estimate for y. So by the time we estimate the error term, the y we are having is no more the actual y. We call it the predicted y or the estimated y. And the beta naught and the beta one we have there will be beta naught cap and beta one cap. So beta naught cap will not be the estimate for beta naught and beta one cap will also be the estimate for um, beta one. So for a multiple linear regression, the process is what the same, only that now we have more than one independent variables. So in this case, we have K independent variables. If K is equal to two, it means we have two independent variables. If K equals to three, we have three independent variables and so on. So the multiple linear regression, the dependent variable is still one variable. Why the independent variables are many? They can be many. So we want to look at the relationship between Y and each of the independent variables. So the same thing, the beta not beta one, all the betas are parameters that we need to what, estimate. So the idea is to minimize the error time. And how do we minimize the error time? There are many ways we can minimize it, but one good thing is that we have to square the error time is a way to minimize it because an error time should be a small value. And when you square the small value, it becomes smaller. And by the time we differentiate that value, it becomes very small in such a way that we can easily ignore it uh, or assume it to be zero. And with that, our equation one will become equation three, while equation two becomes equation four. And with that, we can easily estimate the beta naught and beta one using a convenient method. Some method are least square method, the maximum likelihood method and different method. But in this place, in this case, we are not going to do that. The software, the Arrow package or the uh, code that we are going to use to do that for us. But I'm just giving you this so that you understand exactly what we are doing. So let's go to Anova. The next one is Anova. We look at one way and over. In one way and over, we have that equation one there. That is y is equal to mu plus to i plus e i j. The y i j is the jth observation receiving the i treatment. The jth observation receiving the i treatment. The mu there is the overall mean or grand mean. Why the so I is the height treatment effect. So I can range from one to K, meaning that we have a K treatment. If we have only two treatments, then first back to T test. It's no more and over, it becomes T test. But if we have more than two treatments, then we can do and over. Two or more, more than two, three or more treatments, we can use uh, ANOVA. So here, the dependent variable, which is YIJ, is a numeric value, it's a continuous value, it's a measurable value, a value that we can determine the mean. Why the treatments, they are nominal values, ordinal values, most, um, in most cases, they are categorical values. Maybe we want to look at gender effects, we say one for male, two for female. We want to look at uh, maybe uh, weather effect, hot temperature, cold temperature, and mid temperature and some like So we code it with numbers. So they are mostly categorical variables, but they all fall under general linear model. So the two-way ANOVA, in two-way ANOVA, they are not saying that we are adding the block effects. Apart from the treatment effects, 
you're also looking at the block effect. The block effect will help us to reduce the um, error time, the random error that is J. So in this case, the YIJ is the observation in block J receiving the treatment in uh, receiving treatment I or receiving the height treatment. Why the BJ is the J block effect. So in this case, we have the treatment effect and we have the block effect. The treatment effect is still the same definition as we have it in one. So uh, we have the block effect. For instance, let me just give you a scenario. The treatment could be that we want to look at teaching pattern by four different lecturers. And you have four different classes that you have assigned the lecturers to. So the students are the experimental animal. The result performance of the students is what you want to use to judge the performance of the lecturers. So the style or the method the lecturers use in teaching are the treatments. So we have four treatments. So within a particular, so those, those uh, students in those classes, there are different groups that we apply the four treatments to. So in this case, because we are only looking at the treatments, we look at one way and over. But we can go to two way and say, okay, apart from the method the lecturers are using or the teachers are using, what of gender? Gender can affect their performance. Maybe some people believe that male, the male perform better than the female. And so we need to use um, that blocking effect of gender. So by the time we consider the pattern of teaching or the method of teaching of the lecturers, and we also look at the uh, gender as the blocking effect, we talk of two-way ANOVA. So we can also add three-way ANOVA, which is the Latin square design, four-way ANOVA, Latin square design, and so on. But for now, we just look at one way and two way. We can do one way and two way, we can do any other ways. And one thing about the ANOVA is that the non-hypothesis is always stated that the means are equal. It's also as you always assumed that the means are equal. And the alternative is always saying that the means are not equal, or at least there is a particular mean that is different from, at least there is a particular mean that is different from other, from other mean. So let's go to the chi-square. The chi-square is the third thing we are going to look at today. The chi-square statistics is given by this. This form, there are two formula. The, the other formula is for the distribution. We want to test if a particular theoretical distribution is same as the actual distribution or same as under theoretical distribution. So that we just use summation i equals to one to n. And that will be the, the degree of freedom of that is just n minus one. But in practical sense, most time, most cases, when you do a survey, what you want to look at is the um, association between two um, variables. You want to see the effect of one or the other, or if the two have any association. So this is the type of chi-square you use, we do. So the chi-square there, the OID is the observed frequency. Observed frequencies like the count. And the expected frequency will be gotten by formula. The observed frequency is the one that the actual frequency you can see. Why the expected frequency is the one you calculate. So the um, arrow there is the number of rows, Y J is the number of what? Columns. And the expected frequency is given by EID equals to the row total, pardon me, that row I should be row I total multiplied by column J total. Row I total multiplied by column J total with uh, degrees of freedom of R minus one multiplied by C minus one. Note that the total observation of that frequency must always equal to the total expected frequency. If the total of that frequency is 50, the total expected frequency must also be what, 50. 
So the uh, null hypothesis for chi square is always that there is no significant association between one variable and the other variable, between one factor and the other factor. Or you can also say there is a, no effect of one factor on the other factor. Why the alternative is always that there is a significant association or there's a significant effect of one on another. So that is the end of the slide. So at this point, I will now share the screen. And Dr. Gunsaya, you can put down the screen so that I can share. Okay, let me quickly look at the hypothesis. Finally, the statement of hypothesis, we have the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. Anytime I want to do a research, sometimes we state, apart from the research questions and the objective, we always state hypothesis. And to carry out your hypothesis, it is important that you know these steps. You have to state the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis is the hypothesis that you want to reject or not to reject. So if you reject the null hypothesis, you cannot use the statement in the alternative hypothesis. But if you do not reject the null hypothesis, then you conclude with the statement of the word null hypothesis. Then we always state the level of significance alpha. Is the probability of committing type one error. I don't want to go to the general statistics, but it is always stated. In most cases, we use 5%. It can be as low as 1%, especially in the medical field. And it can be as high as 10%. This is the margin of error we can allow. Or this is the tolerance level of error we can allow. Then once you state your level of significance, then you can state the test statistics. The test statistics is just the formula that you are using. Like I show you that of chi-square. Anuba has his own test statistics. He used F test. That is the mean square error divided by the mean square total. So at this point, I'm going, and then we have the decision rule there. The decision rule, the decision rule there is always stated that once your P value is less than the level of um, significant, then you reject the null hypothesis, meaning that the test is significant. When you do not reject the null hypothesis, and when you say the test is not significant, you calculate your value of the test statistics, then you take your decision and make necessary conclusion. So I'm going to share my screen now so that everything we have discussed about, we are going to see how to use our code the arrow code to demonstrate it because that is very much important. I want to look at my, to share my arrow studio screen now so that. Okay. Let Sorry. me open. Uh, Are we all on this? Akun, please listen. Uh, wait, please. Uh, please, uh, for some of us, let us download the code is on our WhatsApp group and the data. Make sure you download them on a particular folder. The two of them must be together for the purpose of this, uh, so that we can follow as the instructor is trying to run the code. Thank you. So as I said last week and previous week, anytime we want to download our code, we must make sure that the code and the data should be in the same folder. Since you have already created a particular folder for this uh, course, I believe the one you are going to download now, just if you are not downloaded it, just download it and put it in the same folder. Even if you have downloaded it before, copy it in the location, and transfer it to that folder so that you know that all your work are in a particular folder. So that anytime you want to copy it, you can just copy that folder. Know that you have copied everything. Save everything inside that folder. Just know the particular location of the folder. So if you want to open the file, let's assume that you have opened your Arab Studio. I want to open the file. You click on file. I have to go through it again so that you know it. Then you click on open file. 
Then you locate, you locate the particular folder. My own is data analytic class. You have your own folder. Don't start looking for data analytic class, except you have decided to name your own folder the same name with mine. But you have a particular where you have been naming your folder so that when you want to look for it, you can easily look for it. Inside my folder, I have all this. You might not have all this, but what we just need today is this lecture three script. Lecture three script is what we need today. Once I click on it and I click on open, just click on open, it appears on my system. Because I've already opened it, this is it on my system. It's already open, I have all the codes here. So if you open yours, you also have this set of codes. But for it to run, you must make sure that you have downloaded the data too. Sorry, uh, to... sorry, Echo. Please, sorry. Are we, if you are, how many of us are still struggling to download the code or you don't have the code? So that all of us will be on the same page. Please, if you've downloaded the code and the data, please kindly say, kindly chat us, say yes. Say yes, if you've done, if you have your code now, say yes, please. Okay, only one person say yes, please. We are waiting for others. Two, three, four, okay. This is hands on and we want to be, not yet, okay. Please kindly download it. Kindly download it to your system. so that what our instructor is saying, you also follow the suit. Thank you. Over to you, sir. Okay. If you look at the code we have here, the first thing I have here is read the data from the file, from the CSV file. That first statement is a comment. If you look at the hash tag there, showing that this statement is a comment. Then the second statement I have there is the statement that imports the data from the CSV to R. I have decided to name it employee.data. You can name it just employee. You can just name it data or data one. But I just like using this pattern employee.data to show that is an employee data. This want me to use employee data with space. I put dot data because it, it doesn't allow space. As I've said earlier, it can allow alphanumeric or alphabets, but no spaces are not uh, allowed. And uh, some special, special characters are not allowed. Then this can also be equals to, I said it the other time, this can also be equals to this less than an dash can just be equals to, you see, get the same results. The keyword here is read.csv. Read.csv, then this should be the part or the file name. I don't need any part since my file and my data on the, are on the same folder. So that's why I have the employee2.csv. The .csv, .csv is the extension of the file. It can be an Excel file. But for you to download and for you to import an Excel file, you need a library, you need a package. But I want to reduce the amount of packages you are going to use. That's why I've decided to use the .csv. Then the header, as I've earlier explained, header true. It means that the first, when you have Excel file, you have the first row as the header or as the header. So you have to say true, meaning that the first rows at the header, or is the header. Then we have SEP. SEP there shows that the values are separated by commas because it's a CSV um, file. Then attach employee.data. Attach just to show that this is the data we are using, it is attached to this uh, environment. 
so that anytime I want to call any variable from it, we can each, uh, easily call it. So if I run, now I'm not using the Markdown, I'm using Arrow Studio. So once I click on the run here, you see execute it line by line. Instead of the one, the other one I was taking you through that is execute chunk by chunk. This one execute line by line because Arrow itself is an interpreter. So it interprets the first line, it runs it, it runs it. But if you discover that there's an issue, you should not be able to run the first line. So not, not talking of going to the second line, like way compilers we do. Compiler will compile everything and run everything together. An interpreter runs it line by line. So the first one there is given an error showing that it's giving an error showing that we cannot find the file. So what happens? Is it that the file name is not correctly spoiled? Or maybe I'm not working from the particular directory. So I have to go and go to session. I have to change my directory to that folder. Let me set my working directory. I have to do this again so that choose the directory. I'm working from data analysis class open. So I have set my working directory. Let me do the same thing I did before. Run this step. You can see that I have loaded my employee.data. That employee2.csv, I'm not seeing it as employee.data. So subsequently, if I want to call it, I will call employee.data. If I want to print all the values, all the data set in employee.data, what I just need to do, I don't need to use print command. Yes, if you like, I use print command. But once you just type employee.data, it will show you all the values. So let us try that employee.data. Can you see all the values here? This is the values. You can see all the values. We have the employee code, which is a unique identifier. We have the gender. The gender is either male or female. Then we have the date of birth, which is date. We have educational level years. That is the years the employee has spent in learning, in education. Maybe right from the primary school to the, or from the basic to the level years. Then we have the employee category. or custodian, those are the three levels. It's either the person is a clerical staff or a managerial staff or a custodian. Then we have, we have uh, the current salary of the person, of the uh, employee. We have the beginning salary, the full salary the employee collected in the place of work, where he's currently working. Then we have the number of months since the employee was employed or was hired. That is months since I had. Then we have previous experience in months. Oh, sorry, uh, uh, Mr. Matthew. Yes, sir. Please, how many of us were in line five and we are getting the same answer our instructor is getting? Please put it on the chart. If you are getting it, please put it on the chart. Please do that. Oh, no, okay. Please, who is getting it? Let me go through that section of um, setting the directory. Maybe that is what they did not get. Aha, uh -huh, please. We have to set the directory so that this, you know, when yeah. I ran it oh. the first time, I was also getting an error okay. once I changed the directory. So let them also change the directory they are working from. The default directory is documents. If, you are work, if all your files are inside my documents, we won't have any issues. That is the default directory for our. But if I created a folder for it, you have to locate that folder. Then I know that I'm not working from documents. I prefer working from this particular folder. So that's yeah, what working. Sir, directly. is it uh, Markdown again or not Markdown? So this one is not Markdown. Now. This one is just normal. Uh, the way it is, can copy to your console and run it directly. 
if you don't have studio, you can just open your R and run the script directly. But when you try to run it, it's showing Markdown again. Please try and run this one. You Look at my, is, can you see my cursor? Let me start yes. from the beginning. Can you see my cursor? If this exactly. Markdown, if this Markdown, I run it from the side, there is nothing to run. Hello, sir. Echo. There is no markdown yet. Hello. Okay, go ahead. I'm Explain. running line by line. Uh, yes. So for markdown, like what we did last week, if I want to run, I run it shung by shung by the side. Yes. For this one, I'm running it line by line. So this is just the arrow studio directly. So you can copy directly to your However, if you don't want to use the studio and you see get the same results. So let me go back to that um, working directory. For those people that I didn't get it, click on section, because if you don't get it right, everything I will do today, you will not follow. That's why I just have to go back to get it. Click Thank on you, session. Sir. Click on session. Then you see set working directory. Just do exactly the same thing I'm doing you will get the same results. Set working directory. Then go and pick shoes directory. I believe everybody should have this. What I'm seeing on my screen, everybody should be seeing it. Just set it, then choose the directory. You can always locate where your folder is. If your folder is on the desktop, you click on desktop and search for the folder. If your folder is, um, inside documents, you click on documents and search for the folder. Like my own folder is inside documents. I'll click on the folder, which is data analytics class. I click open. Look at the bottom here. It's showing me that I've set the directory. I can see the parts. See users, admin, documents, data analytics class. That is the directory. That is where I'll be working from today. I, I can get, uh, I can have on that folder elsewhere that I want to work with. I've also changed the directory to that particular folder so that you see it. But if all your document, if all your files are inside my doc, inside the documents, then document is the default directory. Just be working from the from documents. I believe we have all done that and we are on the same page. So let me quickly run my course again. Um, let me run it from the first line. Run the first line. That is my employee data. Then I run the attach. You can see I'm running line by line. It's all shung by shung. Then employee data, I want to display this. Then now add. I don't want to display all my data sets. I want to display just the first six observations and the header. You know, like the one I have now, if I want to check the header, I have to scroll up to see, but if I run this, ed, if I run the, let me run the ad now. If I run the ad, you can see the ad is just giving me the forces values. But in this case, it's not giving the forces value because I put comma two there. The comma two is showing that, show the first two observations instead of the first five. But if I remove the two, uh, the first... Hello. sorry, yes, sir. sir. Uh, personally, when I try to run it, this okay. is what I'm getting. I'm getting, it get, it, when you click on the run, it will give you run selected line, current chunk, Run next chunk. These are the list I'm getting. Uh, you don't need to. You don't need to click on this. Just okay. This is what you are clicking. You are clicking this. Just Which click one? on the run. Can you see yes. now? See also, just click on the run. It will run the line for you. That is what I'm don't, clicking too. Don't have any drop down. See my cursor here. 
Can you see the cursor? See this cursor? Yeah. You can see this front that is here. We run the current line or selection. I okay. In that case, that's what I did anyway. But I don't know what whether anybody is still getting the same thing. Can you see so the you cursor? Can continue. Yes, run the current line or selection. Selection means I can select more than one line and run at a time. In fact, I can select all and run everything at the time. Unlike the chunk, I have to run it chunk by chunk. I can select all these files all together, all this code. I can select all and just run Please look one. at the charts. People are getting the same thing I just explained to you. So you can just do one and uh, explain it. Look okay, let's do it this way. Yeah. Let's do it this way. Let's assume that we want to open a new file. Let's start from there. We have this file, but let's assume we want to open a new file. Go to file, click on new file, click on our scripts. This is a new file. Uh -huh. Can you see it now? But let us now go to that lecture three and copy the code we need. Let me copy it up to, let me copy all the plots first. Let me copy to, let me copy, let me copy to Instagram. Let me stop at Instagram first. Or let me just stop at Instagram first. I will continue the other plot from QQ. I will continue from QQ plots. Let me stop here. So let me go to the untitled, which is the new script I have pasted this year. Control C to copy, Control V to paste, or you right click, you click on copy, and you right click, you click on paste. So I have a new, if you look at, if you look at the bottom right here, look at my cursor here, you see arrow scripts there. If you want to change it to markdown, that's where you go and click arrow markdown. But once, once you look at the bottom line here, there is this intersection I have here. You see arrow scripts there, meaning that you are running on arrow scripts. This is um, your studio. You are running on arrow studio. So let me go back and run this. Attach employee. So add. The head will give me these four six values. Head will give me four six values. But if I use head and I start on to view all the six values, I want to view the first two values, I will push comma two. If I run this, it will only give me the first two observations. Sorry for using values. It will give me the first two observations. So the first observation, second observation, if I put four there, and I run it, it will give me the first four observations. Then if I want to look at employee data, where the gender, gender is equals to female, where gender is female, this is how to write the code. You write employee.data, you open the square bracket. The square bracket is for indexing. You want to look at all the places where we have gender is equals to female. And if you look at it, I use double equals to, to show that it's an argument. To show that it's gender equals to female, that is why I use double sign. It's not like gender is equals to female. It's gender equals to female. So if I run this line, if I just click on run, it has done it. All the results I have here is for gender equals to female. This is the result here. That is, this is this line here. Employee, gender equals to female. That is what I have here. So you can see the results. So I only have female. So if you look at the employee code, the first female there is number and the one with code three, four, eight, nine, 10, 11, 14, 20, and so on. So I can also look at numbers of female. If I want to look at it, I can look at the length of that 
and it will give me the results of number of female that we have there. Then, other thing we want to look at, how do we use length? If I want to see the male observation, I'll just type where gender equals to male. If I want to see people that are collecting salary at both a particular value, I put it there, salary greater than or equals to a particular amount. I will see all the people, all the employees that are collecting salary above that particular amount. So any argument I want to do on employee data, you do it inside the square brackets. Then if you want to look at the number of lengths or the number of observations, just pick one of the variables. In this case, I pick gender. Length, gender. N equals to length, gender. If I run this, it has calculated it, it has executed it, and put the result in N. You can see I'm using equals to. I can also use the other sign we have been using. Then if I want to display N, I'll just type N and run it. N is 474, meaning that in this employee table, we have 474 employees. 474 observations or cases. I use observation and cases uh, interchangeably. In statistics, we use observation. In database, they use uh, cases. Either you call it cases or you call it observations, we are correct. We are saying the same thing. Then I want to look at the last observation, the last employee in, on that table. So I just say employee or data in square bracket. I put n comma. N comma means that give me the last observations. N comma means that give me the last row of that table because I don't know n. That was why I quickly look for n, the last observation. So if I run this, this will give me the last observation. That is employee code is four seventy four. The employee code is 474, and that is the last employee, the last observation. We have the female, the gender is female, then the date of birth is 1968. That is um, 5th of November, 1958. Then we have the, the person spent 12 years learning in edu uh, education, in academics. Then the person, a clerical staff, the salary of that person is 29,400. That is the current salary. The first salary the person collected in that company was 14,250. The person has spent 63 months working in that organization and nine months in the previous work, where he previously worked before moving to that organization. So you can actually use um, play around to see how you can manipulate data from the database or how to view some information from the table. Then the next thing we want to look at is how to do some plots with the data. Because in anytime I want to do analysis, we always look at the exploratory data analysis or what I call the descriptive statistics. So the descriptive statistics will help you to show some features of the of the data set. Like for instance, I want to look at a um, bar chart, but I want to use, um, I have table gender. I have to table the gender because gender that I have here, they are not numerical values, they are characters, male and female. If I just plot the bar chart, it will give me an error. So that's why I have to table the bar chart and call it tb.gender. Table.gender, I just shot it tb.gender. But the keyword there is table. Table gender means put this gender in table. It's like you are factoring it. If I run this line of code, this particular line, it has done it. 
We are not seeing the result because it has saved it inside tb.gender. So if I do the bar plot of, okay, if I do the bar plot, let me display the results so that I can see the results. Let me display the results, tb.gender, if I run it. So this is how it comes out in the form of table. We have made it 216. And female 216 and male 258. So if I now do the bar plot of that tb.gender, I will get my result for my bar chart. You can see the bar chart. It comes out in gray color. I didn't use any of the arguments other than the default, the argument for the X, that is bar plot does tb.gender. Just straight away, the system is smart enough to know that we have female and male because the data you have are female and male. They are not one and two. So it picks it directly. That's female and male. Please, there's the, a question here. Okay. From Tolu Lope. Okay. Are you? He said gender is is given Ibo hard error. Can we look into that? Which of the line is it? TB dot gender. Please unmute yourself. I think it will be nice if she can screenshot her error and post it on this uh, what was the Zoom okay. um, message so that he can see the error. Okay. Right. Okay, so we have tb.gender and we have done the bar plots. Now, we want to do another plot that includes other arguments. You know, the first one, I just did the default plot. No color, the gray color in R is always gray and no other features other than the, the two bars showing female and male and the frequency. Now, I want to put other features. I have this uh, vector here, which I call female male. And I save it as gen. Let me run it. Then I want to run this bar plot. Look at this bar plot. I'm still using the same bar plot, the same vector, which is tb.gender. Now, I have names.arg. Names.arg which I call gen, that is female, male. Because sometimes the data you have might be one and two, instead of male and female like what you have. You might have, maybe you have done the coding already, you have one, one, two, 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 where one is for male, two for female, then you easily, or maybe one for female, two for male, you easily code it this way. So that by the time you plot it, Instead of you to have one and two under which will not make any meaning, you have female and male because you have said that this label gender should be female, male. It's a vector of its own. So that's where these arguments come with names dot arg arguments equals to gender. Then S label, as I've said before, is the horizontal axis, the label on the uh, horizontal axis, the white label. Is the label on the vertical as the which is the frequency, and the color is blue. Don't mind this blue. Once you type blue, it will turn into blue because blue is blue. It also, if this uh, just ordinary average, do not show you that blue color. But because you are working with studio, once you mention blue, it will give you blue color. So we say the color is blue, and we have main. Main means. Um, um, the tie to like this one you are seeing here, it doesn't have any tie to, but now we have main. Main is the tie to, so it's employee gender. You can see it inside code, inside double quotes. Then we have border, the border is red, like the one we have in here, the border is black, the bars are gray. In this one, we are going to run now, we have blue, and the borders are red. Let's quickly run this. Once your cursor is anywhere on that line, it will run, you just click on run. You can see it. You can see employee gender. You can see the vertical axis frequency. You can see the horizontal axis gender. 
Uh, we can see the blue color. Uh, we are seeing the red color as a border. So this is more beautiful than what we had before. So you can make it more beautiful than this, depending on the arguments you want to use. So we now look at a uh, group bar chart and stack bar chart. Maybe you want to have what is called multiple bar chart or column bar chart, meaning that you have more than one vectors or more than one variables. In this case, I named this data data.new2. So I table, you know, my gender is not a factor, but I have to factor my gender. That's why I say factor gender and also factor employee employment category because the employment category too is not a nominal value. They are not numbers, they are characters. But I know that once I use a factor, factor means code it. Let the first value be one. Let the second, let the first uh, value, which is the uh, female, be one. And let me be two. Code the other one, too, for me, employee category. In that order, you always code it in uh, alphabetical order. Code it for me. So in this one, I have three values for the code. So if I run this line, so after doing the factor, I will now do the table just the way I did the other table. Because this table now, we have two variables to come up in form of a contingency table. So if I run this and I view the results, you can see it's in form of a contingency table, a um, two by three contingency table. This is a two by three contingency table. So we have three rows and three columns. The rows are female and male, while the columns are clerical, custodian, and manager. To interpret this is easy. We have um, 206 female that are clerical staff, and we have 157 male that are clerical staff. There is no female custodian. We have 27 male custodian. We have 10 female managers and 74 male managers. So that is the interpretation of that particular table. It's a contingency table. Some call it cross tabulation table. Then the label, I call it label one, just the way I use the, these arguments I use here. Yeah, I call it gen. In this case, I call it um, label one. You can give it any name. The left hand side is always your own name. Give it any name you want. Then I have the colors. The colors is my own name too. So I have two colors here green for female and orange for male. Then I come here for the bar plot. The bar plot is data dot new two, data dot new two. Then the S label, gender, the Y label, frequency, the color is colors, which is green and orange. We have the main employees category by gender. We have the border to be red. We have horizontal force. Make it vertical, that is the meaning. Don't make it horizontal, make it vertical. That's why I have always, um, always which uh, short for horizontal force. Then beside force. So if I run this, let me run from here and see what will happen. It will not run. Why is it not running? Because I went to, uh, I started from the wrong place. I have to start from this data does new. I have to run it line by line. Run the second line, which is displaying the table. Run the label, run the color, then before running the bar plots. You can see the bar plots. Then uh, there's no legend. We have the clerical, most of the employees are clerical staff followed by managers and the custodian. But there is no label to show which one is for male and which one is for female. It's only when you have the code, you know that 
one is for male and one for female, but the results you are seeing is the one you are going to publish. So what you have to do, you have to add legend to it. So if you look at my own 29 years, the leg, uh, add legend, if I add the legend to it, I have added legend to, to it. And you cannot see that the legend is showing at the top right, because let me go to the argument of the legend. We have top right, label one, then the sex is called uh, CS and CX equals to 0 0.8 and feel, I use colors. Top right there means that I'm comfortable, I'm convenient with the location of the, of the legend to be at the top right. Let me say top left. If I put top left here, if I change it to top left and I run it, you can see the position. It has moved from, let me run everything all over again so that from the bar plot, let me just run from the bar plot. I run it. You can see the position is now on the left hand side. So it means that this position is not good for me because it's covering the bar. So that's why I have to locate it at the top right. So if I, each time I want to run it, because the legend is running separately from the bar, I have to run it from the bar plus, then I run the legends. I've returned it back to the top right. You can put it in any location you want. You have the top right, the uh, top left, you have the bottom right, the bottom left, you have the top center and so on. So the location you put the legend it should be um, suitable so that anybody reading the plot will see the legend. If the legend is not good enough, you can increase it to this to let's say one point, this 0 0.8. Let us reduce, uh, increase it to 1.0 and run it again. They run from the bar plus, they run the legends. You can see that the size has increased. But I don't want the size to be more than the font, the font size. I don't want it to be more than that of the of the axis. That was why I used uh, 0 0.8. So I'll return it back to 0 0.8 so that I will run the bar plot again. So it has now reduced to 0 0.8. So we have the bars on top of one another. If I want to make the bar to be side by side, I will go to this beside. Instead of saying false, I will turn it towards true. If I run this, the bars will go to side by side. Can you see the bars are now side by side. We have male and female. For the custodian, there is no male and female. While for the manager, we also have male and what? Female. Or female and male. Because the green is for the female, why the um, the orange is for the male. If we look at this bus, it's showing me that I have more female than male clerical employees. The second bar there is showing that there is no female custod uh, custodian, they are all male. There's no female custodian, they are all male. Why that of uh, the third one, which is the manager, is showing that we only have few man female managers. Most of them are male managers. So let us go to the next um, set of uh, slide um, codes. Want to look at them? Um, pie charts. Sorry, sir. Before we move okay. to pie chart, can you please show us how to copy this graph and where to export it? Just do one. 
you can copy as image. I right click on it to make it easy. If you right click on it, you can copy image or you can save image as, just save image as, or better still, you can export your image, save as, click on, can you see export? That is my best option, that is what I always use. Click export, save as image, save as PDF. If I'm working on LaTeX, I like saving as PDF so that the more you expand it, the quality will not change. The quality will remain the same. Either you shrink it or you expand it or you do it, the quality of that plot will not change. That does the advantage of PDF when you take it to LaTeX. But you can save as image, like as JPEG or as PNG in any location you want to save it. Just pick a particular directory and you save it. Or look for a folder and you save it inside any location you want to save it. I think that should be sufficient for now. The arrow plot is here. You can give it a name, maybe figure one or bar plots and save it in the directory or, in any, or any location. If you look at this, you can save as PNG, you can save as JPEG, you can save as TIFF, you can save as BMP, you can save as Metafire, you can save as SVG, you can save as EPS. Depending on the place you want to submit it. So if this is a journal, some journal will tell you that we only accept images as EPS. So we save it as EPS. But if you are not particular about the way you want to save it, you can save it as JPEG or PNG or EPS or whatever way. As I told you earlier, I always like saving my work as a PDF so that when I call it anywhere, if you see you retain that quality, if I stretch it, the quality remains the same. Because as you see it, that is the way you get it anywhere. So let us now go to... Sorry, we have one hand, Engineer Franklin. Okay. Please unmute yourself. Okay, let me wait for the Not question. you, not you. Engineer okay. Franklin. Am I head? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, do, uh, this, uh, uh, thank you very much for this uh, class. And I, I like the way um, these exports, I'm, I'm trying to think now, like if I want to, like I want to present this data right now and I didn't learn how to copy this, uh, this, uh, the bar charts now, the description of the data. Now I want to attach um, this, like the tables, like I want to put a table, like I want to put a table beside it, like I want to present the table. Okay, this is the, the data I had and this is how I describe it. Like how can I attach the table, like export the table that I use to plot this graph? I hope um, I am understood, sorry, sir. Okay. Over to you, sir. Okay, that should be on that scene all together. It depending on where you want to, depending on where you want to present the, how you want to present the data. The, the way I will present the data, especially the, um, the, like what you have there. Let me go back to the data that actually gave us that. I came to this place. How to, if I run this, this is the data that actually gave me that result. This is the data that gave me that result. Let me see if I can view, if I can view it. You cannot view it. Yeah. Let me see if I cannot view it. Then yeah, we have to see view of views now. Let's, Um, views should be capital S, okay, capital V, capital V. It's not okay. Let me you, you cannot view here. Yeah. Let me see that view. data is. Data, if it is the data from the from half itself, 
Okay. It's okay. The view, the view, the, the view spelling should be capital V I E W. Hello. So the yeah, we are I, hearing you. Okay. I think this um what you have here is the is the view. This is the data, but it's not coming out. We have, we have the female clerical two six. We have the male clerical one fifty seven. It's not coming out this way that uh, we saw it here. It's, it has a different way of uh, bringing it out. But what I always do, if I want it to come out this way, I always export it and bind it together with the results. Except if you use um, a particular a, a particular um, package to bind it together. But for now, let's just leave it this way. We have the uh, variable one and variable two. The, the view that is, because ordinary view is supposed to view the data from the source, from the database itself. But if we see, just like what um, Dr. Gusey has said, but I decided to use the view on the variable I created, and that's why it's showing this way. But the original result of it is this particular one that is here. The particular one that is here. If you want to copy this result, what I always do, I always copy to Notepad, and I will view it from my Excel directly. Since Excel is my uh, primary way of uh, viewing my results, once I, the way it is, the way this result is, if I copy to Notepad and I open my Excel, I will just copy the result directly from the Notepad to my Excel and put it the way I want it to be. If, it's, um, if I'm using Word, I will just put it under the table or at the end, I will put it on top of the plots or under the plots, or if I like, I can, um, if I'm using PDF, I can also attach it in any way I want to present it. But there are some other options to make it show, maybe as a, a grid with the, with uh, the bar plot, but that is not the lecture for today. So let me continue from the, my file is untied, so I have not saved it. So let me see, continue with it that way. So uh, we have another hand, Mohammed. Over to you, Mohammed. Mohammed Awa Zubar. Are you there? Okay, let me continue. We can ask all these questions later because of the flow of the video. You know, this will still be converted to video. Let me just continue. I will hey, give a lot of uh, time for Please, remember, if it is only 20 lines people get, let them ask questions. It's for okay. their own good. Okay, sir. You understand? We, we are yes, doing sir. it because of them. Thank you. You can continue since the person is not talking. Okay, sir. So let's go to pie charts. We have pie charts here. The gender, as I said before, they are not factors. So I have to factor the gender. The factor gender is like, yeah, giving it a uh, numeric values, nominal values, or what you call coding, factor gender, then we table it. I put it as X. So if I display my X, it's showing in the, uh, no, I've tabled it. It's showing the female to be 216 and male to be 25258. Then if I do the pi, 
the pi is showing me the the values for the uh, is showing me male and female. This just the pi um, chart without any other arguments. But let me add other arguments to see how it will look like. If I put um, let me calculate the percentage, five percent. I don't want to use any any library, any package. So let me calculate the five percent. The five percent is showing that put round. The round is uh, make it one decimal place. I can remove that if I like. It's actually 100 multiplied by X divided by sum of X. Sum is used to total all the values of X. That's what we use sum for. Some of these three might not actually do them, but like some cumulative sum, we have sum. We have cumulative sum. Cumulative sum is, let me type cumulative sum. Cumulative sum, cum sum. I'm just using this point to explain this. Cum sum is to do the cumulative frequency of X. If I put X inside, cum sum will give me the cumulative frequency of X. But if I just say sum, it will just total X. That is what it has given me. So I'm saying that X divided by the sum of X, like the relative frequency, they multiply by 100. That is what I have here. X and divided by the sum of X, then multiply by 100. I have the relative frequency and percentage. Then the round comma one, round is used for as decimal place that keep, uh, let the result appear in one decimal place. So let me just run it. Then I have um, the gen to be female male. Then the five percent is what I've actually done there. Then let me print the five percent. I have female male. The values you are seeing there are now in percentage. If I plot this, I have my pie chart showing the percentage. And I have to put the legend to show the female and male. The legend, these are the percentages. And we have the what? The legend showing that the red color is for female and the blue color is for what? Male. Though there are some other packages that can be used to draw different types of um, bar shots. But with what you have here, this is sufficient enough. Then with the percentage and the and the um, the legend showing that we have female and we have uh, male. Then, if you want to look at on that type of um, pie chart, maybe you want to look at the 3D pie chart that does not come with the base arrow. You have to load a package called Plotris. This plot is you have to load this package, and I've told you how to load package, but let me go through it again. You click on packages, you click on install, just type the name of the package, plot, plot freeze. That is the second one. And click on install. It will install it, but I've already installed it, so I don't need to install it again. So once you click on install, you wait for it to install. After installing it, you now type library. Then you put the name of the package. If you run this, that's run very easy. Then let me now run this pie charts and run the legend. In this case, I have the pie chart in 3D. The same thing I've achieved above. I've also achieved it here with a 3D 
five shots. I still have my legend, female and male there. Then the next one I want to look at is histogram. The pie shot and the bar shot, they are meant for categorical variables or variable at the level of nominal and ordinal scale. They are looking at the scales of measurements at the nominal and ordinal scale. They want to look at histogram. Histogram is not a chart, it's a graph because both the horizontal axis and the vertical axis are plotted to, are plotted to scale. So we have our current dot salary. Current dot salary is one of the variables we have and it's a continuous variable. Instead of typing current dot salary continuously, I just decide to save it as Y so that anytime I call up Y, it's actually calling up the current dot salary. So Y is holding current dot salary. So let me run the Y. Let me run this and run the histogram of Y. This is the histogram of Y. And this histogram, Y is smart enough to know that the vertical axis is the frequency. Since I'm calling it Y, the horizontal axis, we assume the value of Y. And the main, the title will be histogram of Y. This is just histogram without any argument. Now, if you want to now include other arguments, other parameters, let's run this. If you run this, you can see the main is current salary. Everything I've written here, I can write it in a single line. But I'm very really smart that once you are writing and you have, you know, this is, I open brackets and I close it. So everything, every argument I put inside the open and close brackets, I will really see it. Even if I'm putting it line by line, it will see it. So the first one that I have, apart from the Y comma, I have me current salary. That is the title comma. I have the X label, the X as this label. I have the color and frequency force. Frequency force means that please do not use frequency, but use the probability values. If you put the frequency in one, in one corresponded between zero and one. So the smallest value is zero and the largest value is what? One. So you do not distribute it in that order. So the values you are seeing here, they are actually densities, they are probability values. Then I want to look at different plots, different plots or multiple plots, so that all the plots we show on this canvas are used per M, F, rho, C, two by two. Means that the chart I'm going to get, or the plots I'm going to get, I'm going to have four plots, two rows and two columns. So I have four plots. So if I run this, then if I run the, the first histogram, you can see it's occupying the first row, the first column. The employee current salary is the main, is the tied to. S label amount in USD, then the break is what five. This break is what will help us to know how many points we are plotting. So here we have five breaks. So the next one, we are looking at 10 breaks so that we can compare all of them to know the one that is best. Then the next one is 15 breaks. And the last one, I have 20, 20 breaks. So I have plotted this for Instagram all together. So I'm seeing the different results. Like here that I have GDP, it's not GDP. I'll just copy, that should be the fourth. Okay, this one is actually current employee. So I'll copy it. Actually, our current employee, I copy is, 
I'll come and put it here so that I can run it back. Starting with the first one, I run this one, two, three, four. So I have the four plots. So if you want to have six plots, you can make this two by three or three by two. Two by three will give you two rows and three columns. Three by two will give you three rows and two columns. If you want to make it four by four, you can make it four by four. You have four rows and four columns. So that is the number of plots you are going to have. So I want to look at um, the plots and the density plot, the histogram and the density plot. If I add the histogram and I do the density plot, just a line's density of Y. The density of Y is a line that will be superimposed on the words, on the plots, on the histogram. So this is the line on the word histogram. So other codes I have there, I have other codes there. I have the QQ plots. Let me copy from the from the QQ plots. Let me copy to the end so that. So let me continue from here. I've copied some lines. Okay. okay. This one just to demarcate what I've done up and what we have here. So it won't be executed because I'm using hashtag to make its comments. So I'm starting from great QQ plots. Just the way Instagram will show you if the data is normally distributed or not. Instagram is one of the ways of showing that the data set is normally distributed or not. Or if you want to know the distribution of the data set, you can use the Instagram and the density plot. You can also use the QQ plots. So to do the QQ plots, you know my current employee salary now is my Y. So if I do the QQ plots, I have the QQ norm and I have the QQ line. The QQ norm and the QQ line. This one shows that it's not normally distributed. Even the histogram has shown that it is not normally distributed. It is skewed. It is skewed to the right. It's possibly be skewed. If we look at the QQ plots too, it's showing that it's not normally distributed because the, all the lines, they are not inside the point. It's not necessarily that all of them must be perfect inside the point at least, but it shows a deviation here, meaning that the data is not normally distributed. Then if you want to plot a beautiful QQ plot, you have to bring in this um, package called K. If you look at this one and we use QQ plots, you can see how beautiful this is compared to what I have here. Let me, let me remove these plots. Let me plot just this one. QQ. If you look at the QQ plots, the one we are using um, library, the package car to plot. Let me compare with this other one that is here. You can see the difference is clear. This one here is more beautiful. It's the same results, but this one here is more beautiful one compared to this. You can see this as the deviation and the points are, out of the division. This one does not have that division, like the confidence interval. This one doesn't have it, but this one has it, and the points are of that division. 
So we are, so that is what package can do. Package will make the plots more beautiful, depending on the package you are what installing. Then we also have a um, bus plot. The bus plots will also show the distribution of the data. If the data is positively skewed or neg negatively skewed or symmetric, just the way the histogram will do it and the way the QQ plot will also do it. So let's look at the uh, bus plot. The bus plot here is just bus plot without arguments. And that is the result you have there. But we can have a, a bus plot with different arguments. And we have multi, you can also have multiple bus plots, bus plots all together. Uh, yeah, we have, sorry, sorry, sir. We have uh, Michael Abidogo. OK. Over to you, Michael. Yeah, thank you, doctor. Thank you, uh, Dr. Matthew. I just noticed uh, that aspect of the QQ plot with the car package. You know, when I when I run it, it's it spelled out uh, an error that there is no package called car. Okay. You know, I... So the first thing you do anytime you are running a package, you have to install the package. This once you see library it means that I already have the package. That's why I can call the library. I can call it. So for me to for you to run it and you get a result, you go to package. Can you see packages? Can you see my cursor? Where you have those plots, just look up, you see packages. Are you there? So you click on packages, then you click on install. Just type the name of the package. The uh, name of the package is car. Just type car. That is cars. Click on the car. Install it. And it should be installed. If you have data, it should be installed. But subsequently, they are using it. You don't need to install it again because you have already installed it. You can just call the library. But anytime you want to use it, you must call the library for you to use it. But you only install once, except you decide to format your system and install everything. Even if you format your system, you can copy those packages. Those packages are installed somewhere on your C or your document. Just copy them out. So that anytime you install it again, you keep it. So that I want to call the package, you install from your, you can install. Let me quickly show that you have you want to install a package. It's showing that reciprocal uh, three cran. You are installing from the arrow cran. You can start to say that I want to install from package archive. Then go and locate your package archive where it is and you install from your system. That is, if you already have it on your system, maybe you want to change, you are copying from one system to another, you can do that. Otherwise, you just install from the arrow cran directly. So you have to install the package before you can use the library, otherwise it won't run. So let me continue. If you click on the library, if the library is installed, you can see you can see the cursor. You can see the cursor here showing that yes, library is ready to receive under argument or under code. So the next one is the QQ plus. You can see it. Then I want to go to bus plots. Bus plots. I have done this. Then I have these other bus plots. This other bus plot, I have two vectors here. I have the beginning salary and I have the current salary. You can see that the beginning salary is smaller than the current salary, the first salary that the employee receives. They are more than a, they are less than compared to the current salary. And this dot dot shows that they are outliers. That is the meaning of the dot dot. Because if you look at bar charts, the bus, this um, the box itself, that middle line is showing the median. Then the box, the down box is showing the first quarter. This is showing the um, third quarter. This line, the whisker, the one below is showing the minimum value, and the one above is showing the maximum values. Why all these are at, at, at liars? 
the outliers showing that they are positively skewed. Then we want to look at scatter diagram. I'm just trying to look at as many plots as we can do. So your bus plots, your QQ plots, your histogram is is carried out with um, continuous variables. You don't use a uh, categorical variables for histogram. No, use your bar chart and your pie chart for that. But for your continuous variables, you can use your bus plots, do your um, QQ plots, your histogram, your density plots. And you can also do scatter diagram if you have two variables, one occupying the y, the vertical axis and the other one occupying the horizontal axis. Like what I have here, the scatter plot of beginning salary, comma, that of the, um, okay, I have beginning salary and beginning salary. Let me turn one to current salary. So that I'll not have a path. If I plot this one, let me just plot this. If I plot this one, I will have a perfect line because I'm talking of looking at the relationship of one um, variables with itself. But let me turn one to current salary so that you can see the plot. So you can see the scatter plot. This is the scatter plot. The scatter plot without any other argument. So current dots, salaries on the vertical axis, begin dots, salaries on the horizontal axis. Then we have the scatter plot. Looking at the plots, you see that it is positively Correlated. There is a positive correlation between the current salary and the beginning salary, but it's a scattered plot. Everything is not on a straight line, meaning that it's not everybody that has a the salary beginning salary and the current salary is not that proportional. Some people can start with the same beginning salary and at the current time they might have different current salary. In fact, some people can start with a lower beginning salary and overtake somebody with a, a, that have started with a better salary before him based on the current salary. So that's why the plot is what scattered. So what we do if we are fitting a linear regression is to now fit a line, what you call a line of best fit that we cut run through those plots so that when we want to predict we predict with a straight line when the, the result is steady. That is when you can do your prediction. It's the error that is making this plot to be what scattered. So I should be scattered actually. If I do the second one, if I run the second one, I this time around. I'm still using the same plus, but I've added the main to be current versus beginning. You can see this one as tied to compared to the previous one. Yeah, I have X lab to be beginning, and I have X lab to be current. You can put this beginning salary or, 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 and current salary. Then we have the, let me run the AB line. Let me run the AB line. The AB line, is a linear model line. We have not done linear model. We are going there, but LM means linear model. The current salary is the dependent variable. Why the beginning salary is the independent variable? The color is red. So this is the regression line. This one from this place just comment. That's why I put ash. It's not running with the code. Then I have the lines. I have the lowest. For the beginning and the current salary, you just pick the two points. So there are two lines I want to plot now on that. If I plot the first line, this is the what I call the regression line. It is estimated by estimating your beta naught and your beta one. And you plot it. This is Y cap, the fitted line. Then I can also draw on that line. 
picking the lowest value and the highest value. We have two lines there. Both of them are lines to predict. But one is uh, the LM and the other one I use the lowest. Then we have PS. PS is like you have is, is, uh, a matrix plot where you have the matrix plot of all the variables. So if you look at what I have here, I start with and sim. Uh, I think this symbol we call it sim. As you always at the top of the tab, your tab button, if you look at the top, you will see there just all your shifts and presses. It will come up. It is sim. Then all the variables you want to look at, starting from current, current salary to beginning salary to months since I had to educational level, yes. I have how many variables here? I have one, two, three, four. I have four variables here. You can have as many variables you want to have here. Then the data I'm using is data employee, employee dot data. That is the first data we started with the one I attached, is still attached. Then I have main simple scatter matrix. If I run this, can you see this? You know, these are the four variables I have: the current salary, the beginning salary, the most since I had, and the educational level. If the correlation between correlates and uh, the scatter plot of current salary and beginning salary is this one, is this one here? It's showing positive relationship. The one between current salary and a uh, month since I had is not actually showing maybe it is a um, positive or that negative it's almost showing no relationship and the one between current salary and educational level because educational level is more like an uh, ordinary that's why you see it like this but you still see that there is a positive relationship because it's going upward there's a positive relationship between the current salary and the educational level so this is a type of plot, we call it a scatter plot or matrix scatter plot or correlation plot. Then, let me take away this, it's not supposed to be part of the code. I don't need that. So if you look at the scatter plots, I want to do another um, scatter plot matrix from the car package. This, this PS is without the package, it's from the Arabic. And this is what these the results. Let us now library the car package. We already have the car package. If you run the car package and the scatter plots, the scatter plot matrix, you can see how beautiful this is. So the the horizontal is this showing us the current salary. This is the density plots the beginning salary, the density plots, and so on. Why the other plots is showing us both the scatter plots and the QQ plots combined. And you can see the results. So it depends on the one you want to use. You can use the one without using the library or use this one using the library, all depends on you. You want to make leave it simple, you use the previous one. You want to make it more complex and more beautiful, you use the second one. Then um, let us go to the let us go. Let me leave all this code here. You can run all these ones on your own. And let we have the plot uh, 3D, we have the east map. The, each map with uh, different colors. And we also have the G plots for the each map. So you can do the each map without, um, can I do the each map? Hello, sir. Uh, Dr. Batu, please. Uh, we have Michael Abidogun. Okay. Over to you, sir. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, okay. I, 
I I actually observed something as I was uh, following along. Uh, I noticed at that line where we're trying to work on the scatter plot uh, matrix, uh, okay. calling calling on the education level and yes, I I I noticed an error on my console. I want to okay. ask, could it have been because I didn't run it earlier? Would that be the reason why I was having the error at this time when? Uh, okay. Could yes. Then, okay. Then, then the second thing was that I was kind of lost a bit because I was trying to 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 know if the, the time you are talking about skewness. So my mind was going back to some elementary knowledge of the statistics and the scatter plots. So they have actually been an area of challenge. So uh, the, the, the question is, how then would I be able to now explain, being an analyst, looking at the, 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 blo uh, the blocks I'm seeing? That's another question I have. OK, let me go back to the first scatter plot. That is this one. On my own system is 137, line 137. If I run this. This particular one. If you look at the plot, what we if want to look at, because scatter plot is actually used, used to show the relationship between two variables. Since it's not 3D, it's 2D. So one is occupying the vertical axis, the other one is occupying this uh, horizontal axis, it's two dimensional. So what we are looking at is, we are looking at, instead of me to do each of these plots, and we have about how many plots here, I've decided to do it in matrix form so that we can look at it all together. Now, look at current salary, look at beginning salary. What I have up here is what I have by the left by the left hand side. You get it now. So what I have here is what I have by the left hand side. So it's the same uh, plot. You determine a plot. If you want to know if there is a relationship, what is the gen general direction of that plot? How is it going? Though some are coming down, some are going up. But what, what is the general direction of the plot? You see that it is upward, meaning that there is a positive relationship between the beginning salary and the current salary. You can say that if the beginning salary is getting higher, the current salary too is getting higher. That is the meaning. So there is a positive relationship. It also goes for current salary and educational level. It also shows positive relationship. For beginning salary and educational level, yes, it's also positive relationship. The one who cannot actually determine the relationship is between current salary and, and um, months since I had. Though if you want to look at it, you might say it is upward or it's not linear. Let me put it that way. And if you look at other ones too, between this, between the educational level, yes, and the current salary is positive, it's positively related. So those are things we look at. All this one will not show you how strong uh, the relationship, I said you do the correlation. Most plots, in most cases, they are not confirmatory tests. They are only using, we are only using IG to look at it that, okay, this is, uh, can be normally distributed or not, or positively related or not, until you do your test actually before you can know what the result is. So let me go back to, then the one that is not running because you did not run it from the beginning. If you have actually run it from the beginning and you attach that data, you will not have any problem running all these ones now because I actually attached the data. So let me now go, let me now go to my simple linear regression. Because that is five minutes, to, five minutes to go. If you look at the codes I have here, they are very simple, simple codes. 
Look at this linear model. If I run this linear model, I have, I have divided Z and X. Let me go and run my, okay. I don't need to do the library, this particular library for me to run my linear model. So I can just run the Z. Z is my current salary. S is my beginning salary. And Y is the month since I had. So for me to run my linear model, what I just did is LM Z X. If I run this and do the summary, I can get the beta naught, the beta one, the beta naught is the intercept, the beta one is the slope. I can have their standard error, their T value, and their P value. If you want to interpret this based on a decision rule that was stated, if you look at the P values, they're actually less than 0 0.05. If your level is minimized 0 0.05, it means that the beta naught is significantly different from zero, and the beta one is also significant. We also have the um, arrow square there, which is 0 0.7746, which can be interpreted as 77.46% um, of the variation in Y can be, uh, on the variation in Z can be explained by the variation in X. So if I run the multiple linear regression, I'll still have the same result, only that in this case, I have more than one independent variable. The intercept is significant. The slope of the first variable is significant, uh, independent variable is significant. And that of the other one is also significant. I can also have my average square there. If you look at the average square of this second one, it's like it's 78.49. It's better than that of the first one. So there are, two, there are some other things you look at, but basically, if you run your regression, these are the results you expect from it. Then the ANOVA, one way ANOVA, if you run it, and you do the summary of the one way ANOVA, you have your degree of freedom, you have the sum of square, you have the mean sum of square, it will show you your F statistic, and you show you your p-value. It will show you for that of the, Factor that is gender, and it's also sorry for the residual. So the mean square error is what you have under the residual here. And if you run the two way ANOVA, run, run, it will give you the two way ANOVA. We have factor gender, and we have under factor employee category before the residual. So this is two way. If you have more than two variables, if you have it, you have three ways and so on. Why for the chi square? We have to be Hello, able to. Ekun. Sorry, before okay. you leave the ANOVA. ANOVA. Okay. Now we have asterisk after we yes. run it. What does yes. it mean? Let's go under the, the plus. Let me um, select it. You see significant code. You see this one I've selected. The Triple asterisk means that even at 0 0.0000, it is significant. The two asterisk means that at 0 0.01, it is what significant and so on. The one asterisk also shows that at 0 0.05, it is significant. If my significant level is 0 0.05, it means that these two are very significant. Because even at 1% level of significant, it is very significant. Even at 0.1% level of significant, it is very significant because it is very close to zero. The closer your p value is to zero, the better the significance is of that uh, particular test. So this one is showing that there is a significant difference between the gender, between the uh, performance and the current. Uh, since you are using our current salary, that is this Z, it means that the current salary of male is significantly different from the current salary of female. That is just the definition, that is just the conclusion. The current salary of male is different from the current salary of female. Then the employee category is also significant. It means that the money someone in managerial position will collect is significantly different from the one the custodian will collect. And it's also significantly different from what 
the um, cloud or the clerical staff or we collect. So there's a significant difference. I don't take us to the post hoc test that will show us where the uh, difference is coming from. Maybe next class, I will do that if I have the time to do that. But you can also explore more. Then uh, the residual there is just showing, you know, if you are calculating, you have to calculate the degree of freedom for the gender, which is two minus one. That's why we have one. The degree of freedom of the uh, employment category, we have three categories, three minus one. Then that of residual is the total minus this minus this to give you 470. You know, we have 474. You have 474 minus one minus two minus one to give you 470. Then we have the sum of squares. Since you are not doing it manually, the system will calculate it for us. That's why I didn't bother to put the formula there because the system will calculate it. Therefore, the, uh, the last one we are running, which is the chi square, we have gender and employment. Is there any relationship between them? If I run this one, it's showing the chi square value of 79.28. The degree of freedom is two. That is the number of row minus one multiplied by the number of column minus one will give us two. And the p-value is 6.098 times 10 raised to the power minus 18, meaning that the value is very small, meaning that it's significant. So it shows that there's a significant association between the gender and the employment category, which we saw in our plots that most of the um, managerial position they are male, while for the clerical position, most of them are what female. It means that your gender can determine your, um, your category as a staff. So, Ordinary, which is not supposed to be, if the female are given equal chance of being at the managerial position, and the male has also given equal chance of becoming a, 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 a clerical position, the result would have been that there is no association. But at the, in this case, even from what we saw from the plot, we discovered that there's a significant association between the gender and the uh, employment category. So I will stop here because it's already nine o'clock. Basically, we look at three different methods of analysis. We look at the regression, we have looked at the ANOVA, and we have also looked at the chi-square. These are basically one of the uh, three most, or the three most uh, analysis people do. But we have other ones, cluster analysis, and many other ones. But basically, these are the three most people do. So you can always go online to get your code. Once you see your code, just adapt it to what you want. If you see something like this, you already have this code. AOV is the keyword. My Z is that dependent variable. That why I I talk of. My gender is the to I. My employment is the beta J. The, remember the model of the two way I told you. And the summary will give us everything we need to know about um, that particular model, which I call model four, which is the two way handover. So, with all this, if you want to do your analysis, you don't necessarily need the statistician. Once you have your data, you can run it yourself. You are doing ANOVA, you can run it yourself. If you are doing linear regression, you can run it yourself. If you are doing a um, chi square, you can run it yourself. So when I come next week, I will not base mainly on predictive model, which is the, the linear model, the nonlinear models, the generalized linear model, predictive modeling is what we look at next week because in data science. What we always try to see is how we can fit, how we can predict the dependent variable. The dependent variables are variable of interest, and we want to predict it. So in most cases, we use predictive um, predictive uh, models. So next week, we look at that, how we can partition our data into two different data sets for training and as if uh, for data science. 
we look at that, how we can prepare the data completely. Then quickly, let me explain this. Regression is mainly used for relationship, measuring a relationship between two or more variables. For um, ANOVA, we are using for difference. We are looking at the difference between categories or difference between um, or among um, different um, groups. Why for chi-square, it's also showing relationship or association or the effect of one on the other. So that if you want to do analysis, if you see objective, we know you are talking of difference. You want to look at difference between categories. You use um, t, um, t test for two categories, but even more than two categories, you use your ANOVA. If you are looking at relationship, you use your regression. If you are looking at um, association, you use your chi square. Then you can also look at correlation. Correlation is simple. Let's just say you want to look at correlation between X and Y. So you can also explore many other things. The correlation between X and Y. Oh, I didn't put X here. Correlation between X and Y. It should give you negative correlation. But I say correlation between Z and X. This is positive correlation. So you can actually look at even the AI of this model. You can just put look at the AI of model. Uh, sorry, um, uh, okay. Echo. Last question, and we continue. No, uh, wait. Uh, I just want you to. We have three tests there. We have ANOVA, we have Kai, and we have uh, regression. Please, I want you to mention when the way you you rush about it just mention when are we using simple linear regression when are we okay. using linear uh, multiple linear regression so that people can write it on their own code too where we okay. put the hashtag they can write it when okay. are we using one and over one way and over when are we using two way and over so that by the time they have the objective they know that this objective we i need to use linear simple linear regression multiple linear regression, one way ANOVA, two way ANOVA, and chi-square. Okay. So Let me you, you can just type it in front, look at the simple, just bracket in front of the simple, when should we use it? Okay. Don't copy it, just type in front of the where you put yes. Okay. Let's just say okay, it's for this For test. simple linear regression, you have one dependent and one independent independent variable. We just have one dependent and one independent variable. Here we are trying to look at the relationship. Relationship with relationship between. So is the relationship between one dependent variable and one independent variable. If what you want to measure is relationship or correlation, you use your regression. Because the result of your regression will also give you your correlation value, we give you the coefficients of determination, everything you need to know about the correlation, it should give you. So one dependent variable, one independent variable. That is when you use correlation, uh, regression when you want to test the relationship between two variables where one is dependent and the other is independent. For multiple linear regression, in this case, is the relationship between one dependent and more than, more than one independent variables. More than one independent variables. So if you are using multiple linear regression, you are using one dependent variable and multiple, uh, um, more than one independent variable. But if the dependent variable are more than one, it's no more multiple linear regression, become multivariate analysis. But we are, we, maybe we might go to that or not for like for your principal component analysis and other ones that are multivariate. So in this case, this is multiple linear because you have one dependent, which is the Z, 
and we have two independent, which are the X and the Y. So in this case, you use multiple linear. But the code is still LM. The only difference here is that here we only have the first one here, we have X, here we have X plus Y. If you have three variables, you have and three independent variables, we have X plus Y plus whatever. If we have four, you just keep on adding and you run the code. For one way and over, you are looking at difference between, let me also type this here. For one way and over, difference among groups considering only one factor. So one way and over is actually, it's not for relationship, it's to look at difference in mean. We want to look at the mean of the first group is it different from the mean of the second group? Is it different from that of the third? I said, if we have only two groups, we are doing t tests. If we have more than two groups, that is when we are doing ANOVA. But because one way comes in, because we are only considering one factor, which is the treatment, then for two way, and the keyword here is AOV. For linear model, it is LM. For this one, it is uh, AOV. And for two way, it's the difference among groups considering two factors. Considering two factors. In this case, what are the factors you are considering? You are considering the gender as a factor. You're also con uh, considering the employment those category as a factor. Gender is a category variable. Employment is a category variable. They can also be ordinary variables, but they must not be continuous. They must not be continuous. What is continuous is the dependent variable, which is Z, the current salary, is the continuous variable. So we are now saying that for current salary, is there any difference between the current salary of male and female? So if you calculate the current salary, the mean for me, calculate the mean for female with some formula and now look at this, that are they actually the same? So if the test shows that it is the same, that is, um, this test is not significant, can I say that it's no significant difference between the male salary and the female salary? But from the results we have, it shows that there's a significant difference between the male salary and that of the female salary. And for employment students, also showing that there's a significant difference in the um, employment category, the current salary of different category are significantly different. So for chi-square, for chi-square, we want to test the association, association, association between two independent, two independent variables. Two independent variables. We want to see the, if there is any association. Association is also like relationship. We want to see if one affects the other or if one has impact on the other. But it has been clearly seen that the gender and the employment category are associated, meaning that if I know your gender, I can determine if you are going to become a manager or not, or be managerial position or not in that organization, because most of the managers are male. We only a few. Um, people in that managerial position that are female. Why, on the other hand, most of the uh, clerical employee uh, staff are female compared to that of a uh, male. So it means that if I'm a female, I know you can likely be a clerical 
staff. That is what it means. Meaning that if I know your gender, I can easily place you if you are a clerical staff or a hair. And if you look at the, that plot and that and bar plot, that multiple bar plot, you discover that the male or the custodian are me. So if I see a female, I know that in this organization, you cannot be a custodian because you don't have female custodian. Let me run that. Um, this again, let me run this part again so that you can see it. This one, this one, and this, and this, and this. So you can see it here that you don't have female uh, custodian. Let me run the so that I can see the okay. The female is green, there is no female in the custodian. So you can see that the chi square is correct. So we can use this to predict that. Ah, if I see a female, I know that the female cannot be a custodian, and the likelihood that the female will be a manager is very slim. So most of the female are clerical staff in that organization. That is just the what the chi square is saying. It measures the what association between two variables. But if the test is not significant, then it means that. I cannot, I cannot actually place you. Either you are a male or female, you can become a manager, meaning that the manager and the female, the female and the male, we almost be of the same height. The custodian, male and female, we always be of the same height. And the clerical, male and female, we always be of the same height. Then we say there is no significant um, association between male and female. So I think with what I have explained, I would have done justice to uh, the regression. Thank you so much. God bless you. Uh, we have uh, Isaac on Olado Olawoy. Thanks. Over to you, sir. All right. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Please, I want to the opportunity to uh, to thank our facilitator for a very good uh, uh, job he has been doing. And also for the layman interpret interpretation I've been given to some of his uh, output. And also to thank uh, Dr. Oke for his ability to know when to stop our facilitator to ask questions on behalf of the other participants as well. That's very, very commendable. Uh, my is actually not question, it's an addition to what he, have been, uh, he has taught us. Um, considering all the methods we looked at today, I want to believe they are uh, parametric uh, method and uh, on parametric method to be applied there are some assumptions to consider yes, um, an oversight from um, the facilitator but I want to quickly add that like take for instance the regression model uh, the model you have I think whether model one for or so I don't know which particular one uh, the, uh, the name you use so if that model can be, if you can take plot of that model, I think it's going to give us a visual, even though it's not test, uh, that we explain some of these uh, uh, assumptions like uh, linearity, uh, almost, uh, and what have you. So I think if you take plot of any of those, uh, I'm referring to the regression particular, take yes. plot of that, I think we are going to have some of this uh, visual, uh, this graph that will explain some of these. Uh, I saw some uh, to us. Thank you. Thank you very much. What um, Prof is actually saying, maybe Prof or Doctor, what is actually saying is that for you to run any test, there are assumptions that are always attached to it. If you want to do a regression, linear regression, we have a set of assumptions. Like, for example, the number of observations must be more than the number of your independent variables. You can have five, um, 10 independent variables and you have eight observation. You can't run it. Then your uh, your dependent variable must be normally distributed. Like the dependent variable I showed you the other time is not normally distributed, meaning that the parameters you have estimated will not be valid. So some of these assumptions must be known for you to use. That means you have to study, go out of the code and study the statistics behind it so that you know when to use it. Even with the ANOVA, we assume, or maybe almost get a city that they have equivalence 
or it's our scale see that they don't have equal variance and we also assume normality for the error time so uh, most of these assumptions are assumptions that you can read off from textbooks or from uh, go online and know those assumptions like with statistician for us to do that all those diagnostic tests all those primary tests this program i'll show you earlier is to show you if the data is skewed or symmetric but most of the data we showed are not normally distributed. So we can normalize it anyway. Sometimes we take the log, or like some of us that are in probability, we just look at the distribution that best fits that particular data and use it to run what I call the generalized linear model. But all this, that's why most times, if you want to do analysis, you advise you to give it to a statistician that knows some of these things so that when it's analyzing, it knows exactly what it's doing. For non statistician they will just run the analysis, the regression result, they will use it like that. Either it is uh, normally, either the dependent variable of interest is normally distributed or not, they are not bothered, they will just run and get the results. Thank you, sir, for the contribution and it's very well noted. Thank you, I, sir. I think his hand is still up. Over to you, sir. Oh. Yeah. Okay. You can talk, sir. All right. All right. All right. That of a regression line, where you have regression. Yes, sir. To that point. Yes, sir. The linear AB. Okay, the simple linear. Let's take that of multiple. Okay, multiple. Okay, that is model two, right? Model two. A plot of that model two, just, just model two, put it in the plot. This, this is the result here. Should I plot no. the dependent variable? Sir. Can you type plot and put that model two in the plot? Okay. Uh, that fitted that fitted line of that model. Plus model two. Model two. That's okay. Okay, sir. What I'm saying that we can have some of this visual of that way. It's even if they didn't do the test. To confirm if they didn't, let's, let's assume it, they didn't, they forgot to like, look at some of this absorption from the beginning. So even from the graph, they can also, after, after they might have model their data, so okay. they can see the, the absorption through some of this, but there are about four of them. If you click enter again, it's going to display about four graphs for you. Okay, sir. Okay. It's all right. That is good, sir. Thank you for the observation, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, please, to every one of us that we are still on this platform, can you please say thank you on the chat for our facilitator for today? Please, let's just type a word of encouragement. This team has been giving us, you know, please let's just appreciate him and appreciate the other members of the uh, of this, thank you so much. Yes, let's just type it. And uh, I really commend your efforts for putting all this together. It's not a joke. It's not, I must confess to you that you've done a, a good job. And, uh, and you can see that we have less question rather than that, and we only have a lot of contribution. Thank you so much for every one of us from that package this thing together to make it, you know, a reality. I must confess to you that it's this little test you are looking at that we think is so small. By the time you substitute your research or your data, then you see the beauty of it. And just like our facilitator said, please let's go back to our statistic book. Don't say you hate statistics. That is not the error in statistics. This is the error of data when your data when data equals to life. Please let's take it serious. Go on your own at your own corridor 
upload your data, save it like it, it taught us, and then let's run it and see what come over it. And at the end of the day, you, when you ask question on that platform, you just ask question about the interpretation and about this little things we ask question about. When they are talking about data science, it's still data science. When I'm talking about data management, that's what we are doing. Data processing, that's what we are doing. Thank you so much. Uh, we can't thank you enough. I don't know whether we have any other question, contribution before we call it a week. So over to you, anybody, you have a question, you have a contribution. The floor is open. Yes, Michael Abidogun, over to you, sir. Yeah, thanks again, Doctor, and uh, thanks again, Doctor Matthew. I just want to ask, uh, based on the the uh, regression, the ANOVA, and the chi square. Uh, you, if I am correct, you said the dependent variable is 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 a numerical. Uh, it's a continuous value for the yes. regression. Okay. Must the independence always be uh, the categorical value uh, using those um, those for the of regression? They are continuous, but some of the independent can be um, ordinary or categorical, but mostly they are continuous for regression. For ANOVA is where I talk of uh, the categorical because the dependent variable is what is continuous. That is the Y. You no, know, the PDF I gave you, I say YIJ. That YIJ is the observed value. They are the observed values. So they must be continuous. But the treatment is category. The treatment one, treatment two, treatment three, we have different categories of the uh, treatments because each treatment is applied to a particular cat, uh, to a particular group, or to a particular uh, set, uh, yes, class. So, and we do it randomly. That's why we say it is called com completely randomized design. If you want to take it to the normal terms, we call it completely randomized design. So, you randomly assign treatments to the um, observations, to the um, experimental units. You get it now. So those uh, values, the treatments itself are categorical values because you label them one, two, three, or one, two, depending on the levels of that particular treatment. You get it now. Even the blocking to the blocks to are categorical uh, values. That is nominal. But dependent variable is continuous. Then for the chi square. Both are categorical. The two variables are categorical variables. Though you can have linear to linear chi square, you can have categorical to um, ordinary chi square. But in most cases, it's better when both of them are categorical variables. That is for chi square. If both of them are continuous, instead of using chi square, just you use your correlation to get the results. I think hope I've answered your question. Yeah, th thank you. Thank sir. you so much. Uh, for the people that are asking for the slide, the PDF file is still on the platform, or you can check your chat. Uh, there is a Google Drive link here. You can download it. It's there. Just check for the R three. Is they are all there? I'm just sharing it again, so you can download it there. So thank you so much. Uh, this note, sir. Sir, I think not less than 99% of your encounter, your assignment, your data will become non normal. For instance, let's look at where Dr. Matthew was talking about uh, the QQ plot, right? Where he was talking about uh, the scattered plot, where he was talking about different plots that he showed us the other time, sir. All this will fail when it comes to industry data. All, all, all nearly everything will fail. 
right? So when we now find ourselves in that situation, and that is the reason why we are being employed in the first instance, to be able to provide insight, to be able to actually uh, be able to draw attention of the management to some things. For instance, let's say we look at a QQ plot. Eventually, it's saying it is not coming, the data or the so-called is not coming from a normal distribution. Then who we'll move like what one of my professors said the other time, that uh, most of these are parametric exercises in industry will not be parametric. I used to give an instance when I was in UI. I said, listen, the day you got admission into university, everybody stretched their hands to you to congratulate you. What are they assuming? They assume that it is linear. The fact that you matriculate doesn't mean you graduate because you are going to that campus to face the reality. So it is linear when somebody say congratulations on your matriculation days. But if you don't burn candle, if you don't stay awake, definitely you will not graduate. So facing the reality when it comes to the industry, right? All this will not be normal. Then look at QQ plot. The moment you have issue with that, that is what leads us to uh, KS test and acidaline test. So from there, you begin to look at so many things and all this will begin to play off. Now, what I'm trying to say is this, I don't want us to be overwhelmed and I don't want us to believe that we can actually have everything now. Please, this little day are given to us. I don't mean little in that context. Let's just take opportunity. Can you believe that this is a single line, that line 178, right? That uh, Dr. Matthew has written there. Honestly, without leading information, one may be there for one month without not knowing that what LM can do for us. That very line 70, uh, 178. So what I'm trying to say here is this. Please, the little we have grabbed in the course of this training, let's go back to the draw board and begin to practice it. When we begin to practice it, we'll begin to have some issues and that will lead us to more question. That question will lead us to more understanding. And before we know it, we find ourselves there. The moment we get there, then of course, you may not find anybody around you to talk to. But thank God for the kind of a networking this uh, the data mind is establishing because I can see the networking here. Somebody could talk to somebody in South Africa, somebody in South Africa can talk to somebody in UK and here and everywhere. What I'm trying to say is this, let's capitalize on the networking that we can see coming up here already. Let's tap into our facilitators. Of course, if you give them 100 hours, they cannot say what is in their mind. They can never exhaust it. But let's go back. Let's go and practice it. Let's have issue. It's not a crime that uh, you run an error. But please, let's go back there and uh, bring, uh, bring forth the, 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 the feedback. So with that, I believe we will be able to explore more and more. Thanks to the team. Thanks to Dr. Matthew, Dr. Babatunde, okay, and so on and so forth. All of you and the participants, thank you so much. That is my little contribution. And if we look at, uh, uh, please, sorry, this cutter diagram that uh, one of my brother was asking question about the other time, and uh, about the symmetric or non-asymmetric, uh, about the skewness, about the kurtosis, don't worry. That which you call elementary statistics that you mm. know then, Honestly, industry doesn't need more than that. Honestly, industry doesn't require you more than that you call elementary. That main median and mode, right? When to use it, where to use it. The skewness, the kurtosis. Please, all those elementary, it is not elementary. It is very, very big, my dear brother. And you are on the right path. I wish us all the best. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Pro. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for the uh, for the word of encouragement and the kind of uh, exposure. Uh, you know, uh, I always uh, like you said. Everything we do, like I, uh, myself, and the entire team, we agree on something, and uh, which I'm going to say now, that everything we do, 
let it be towards the next interview, the next challenges, the next industry work, and the next academic paper, and some other things. So thank you for reminding us, and thank you for your word of encouragement. So, uh, 